Hi everyone, so I recently had the question in community regarding the new data sources feature in Nintex Workflow Cloud, uh, which uses the data lookup control in Nintex Forms for Nintex Workflow Cloud, whereby um, this customer wanted to have one column for duration and another column for interest rate. Now, what they were talking about was if they selected five months, they wanted to have a value of 1.5% be displayed, but not necessarily as a drop down because there is only one option and so five months relates to 1.5 and if you were to select something like eight months 1.45 and realistically you don't want it set as a drop down. Now we are looking into ways of uh, querying for an object so that might be the whole um, the whole list item or it might be something similar to that where it's got multiple properties and we are looking at ways to have that and, and set set values and use it in rules and those sort of things. Now that's a little way off, but there still is a way around this. Now how I would do this is if I come to Nintex Workflow Cloud, now I've already created a data source, so I've given it um, the name of uh, interest rate lookup, the description of interest rate lookup, I've connected my SharePoint online connector, query a list. What I've then done is put in my connection, so I've used the universalforms.sharepoint.com and then I've put in my URL where my list is, which I've got over here. So I've done one month, two months, three months with the interest rate. And then I've also just selected the columns that I really need. We only really need interest rate and duration. So not selecting everything and query, bringing it back and not using it. May as well just query the things that you need and don't bring anything that you don't need. Now I've also set a maximum number of rows to return to three because they've only got three items. Uh, if you've got more, you could put as many as you like. I think it's up to 5,000. And I don't really need any conditions at this point. So I'll go ahead and save that data source. Now, once that's saved, I go and create a new workflow. So the first thing we want to do is set the start event to be an text form. So we select form, design form, and we add the data lookup control. So I'm going to call this... Uh, Let's call this duration. So it's a duration lookup and select the data source configuration and we'll select our interest rate lookup. Now that's the only configuration we really need. We don't need to put any more conditions on here. So you can put conditions in two places. You could put a filtering condition at the portal level for all people using your data source uh, across all your different workflows or you can put unique conditions just at the form level depending on what sort of you know, how much, uh, where you want the conditions to occur and how many people are using your um, data source. But we don't need any conditions. We've only got three items, so this is a fairly simple sort of um, scenario. So then this is the part that is a bit trickier. So usually what you do is you'd select uh, duration and you probably want to select a unique identifier or a primary key. So usually you'd select ID. Now, since we're not doing any um, cascading drop downs, we don't need the ID for a second lookup or anything like that. I actually prefer to use the interest rate because that's the second piece of data we really need. There's no um, no additional data we're going to query for. So I've selected the duration in interest rate. Now if I come to preview, what happens is it goes off and queries for the data <clears throat> and then I have one month, two months and three months, which is great, but still we don't have our interest rate. So as we set that as the value behind the scenes in the drop down, we can actually access that and we do that by dragging on a label. Now, there's a few different way, things you can do which I'll show you through but you could either drag on a label, insert, form controls and add duration. So that might look a bit silly because you're thinking well that's just going to show me what is selected here but not necessarily. What actually happens is if I select one month it's actually showing the value behind the scenes in the drop down. So when we came to here and we set the interest rate as the value label is what is shown, value is what is hidden behind the scenes. Now this will be improved over time so you'll be able to say well I'm going to look at the duration control but I actually want to set, I want to get the label rather than the value or the value rather than the label. So at the moment we just hard code it to the value. So then for that scenario that we were talking about before, this user could actually just then say what I'm going to do is I'm going to put duration and put a percentage symbol at the end of it. So if we go to preview uh, 1.1% and then you could embellish it a bit more and say something like uh, your oops if I can actually type correctly your interest rate is going to be whatever and so 
1.1. Now you notice when I didn't actually make a selection, it looks a bit silly when it has your interest rate is going to be nothing. So how do we actually go and improve that even further? Now I think this also talked about he wanted to have a field that was reader only. Now how can we do the same thing and not actually show anything if it's not required? So what I would do is I would actually delete this. You could actually just throw on um, a text short, for instance. <clears throat> uh, you might call that outcome, whatever you choose. And I'm going to set the visibility to not visible. Then I'd come to a rule and I'd say if duration is uh, selected and um, let's call this um, show percentage then outcome uh, value is and then we go insert and we might say something like your um, interest rate is space plus um, duration now that's always going to just give me a string there's no other additional property so I can't say value or label now your interest rate is so on and so forth plus and then a percentage symbol and I think that's all good. So that's going to put the value in there. But then also we want to say, uh, we want to say outcome uh, visibility or visible is true. Now, if I have made a selection, I actually want to hide it so I don't see something that's not, um, not complete or just doesn't make sense to me. So I'm going to say uh, value is blank and outcome visible is no. Now I think we've got that right, don't always get it right the first time, let's go to preview and see. Great, so now we don't see that field at the moment because we haven't made a selection. So once I make a selection, one month, there we go, outcome, your interest rate is 1.1. Now the thing is, I forgot to put on a additional requirement which he mentioned, which was, and outcome, a read only is true, and you don't really need to make the outcome um, read only is false when it's not visible anyway, but that's just me being pedantic. So now we've got month, your interest rate is 1.1. So that's something else you could do, or another option is you could put a label on here. So you could say, we're gonna do the same thing. So we're gonna to come to our rule, and I'm just gonna copy that, um, that, that formula I built, because I don't really wanna type it out twice. Now we'll go back to designer, and we'll put our label in here, and let's put, Actually, I need all of that, and I'm going to go insert, create a variable, and um, so a variable and a formula is slightly different. A formula is something that's just really used once; you can't refer to it anywhere else. Where a variable is something you can reuse throughout your form if you wanted to. And so we can only make variables in this particular area. So I go and create a, a variable; it sits in here, and then you can actually maintain it through here as well. Now, we'll turn the visibility off by default. We'll come back to our rules. We'll come back into here and we'll say, set the label uh, visible is true. Otherwise, the label visible is false. So now these are just two different ways you could actually solve this problem. So there you go. So this one, your interest rate is 1.1%. Now, if you'd like it looking as a field, this is what you could do here. If you prefer it as a label, you could do it this way as well. So as you can see here, Everything's being updated as I click things. And if I clear it, it all disappears. So I hope that's helpful to you. Let me know in the comments. If you'd like to see some other videos about something else, certainly let me know. Cheers.